Welcome back everybody. Uh, my name is Chai Thompson and I am an effects artist and the founder and owner of Apostle Studio. So today guys, I'm gonna be showing you how to create this effect on the screen now. It is a disintegration effect. We're gonna be using Houdini as this program is all Houdini based. And yeah, let's get straight into this. I'm gonna show you some examples of what other people have done. So as you can see here on the internet, just type in disintegration effect and it comes up with a bunch of different disintegration images. So um, people have used birds, they've used just rubble, they've used smoke, they've used all sorts of stuff. We're going to be using particle effects. As you can see, this has mostly come from Infinity War and Endgame. So we're going to get straight into this. I've set up a new scene, I've also gone to file, and I've also gone down to set project. So when we save all our caches, it'll go to one set project folder. Okay, so first of all, what you want to do is you want to add in the geometry or text that you want to disintegrate. So I'm just going to press tab and enter in font, which is the text. We're going to then click it down here. I'm going to change the name to tutorial as it is tutorial uh, we're going to jump straight into it and the font here I'm also going to change to tutorial find it then there we go all right so as you can see now it's a very thin piece of text and we are going to change that we're going to actually add a an extrude uh, old onto it so if you click the little dot down here bring it down press tab again and type in extrude or majority of it and then you can see it pops up down here it's got a little bit of a symbol of a T um, coming off it and as you can see now it's extruded the text it's a little too much so if you come down to the depth scale you can bring this down to as much as you want I'm gonna stick it around about and about there, um, 0.14 slash 5. Okay, so that is perfect. We're then going to add in a, a little bit of detail into this text. So I'm going to add in a divide. Oh, divide. I'll just show what that does. So it adds a little bit more detail onto the inside. You can also move this around. So it's not as crazy. You can also add a bit of smooth onto it, but that does deform the text a little bit. We don't want to be doing that. Uh, you can increase the um, amount of divisions as well. Um, you can tick all these, see what these do. Uh, avoid small angles is quite a good one as well. So I'm gonna do that and the rest I'm just gonna leave as it is. So all I did there guys was I just ticked on avoid small angles. Left it as three. Um, and that's perfect. So now there's a bit of detail there, but not enough to what we need for the next stage. So if you click tab again, and we're going to type in subdivision. And this basically will add even more detail. As you can see at the moment, though, it is a little bit dodgy on the outside, which is fine. Uh, we can jump through a couple of these, see when the text goes all right. And I believe it's this one. Yep. So. It's the end one here, open sub, and now I think that's just enough detail. You can add a bit more on, maybe add it up to two. Um, the more you add on, the better it's going to be. If your comp computer can hold it, then that's great. I'd probably go up to two or three. Now we've got the, the detail onto this text. All we need to do now is actually add in the sphere that is going to go from one side of the text to the other to destroy it. So we're going to go tab and we're going to type in sphere. At the moment, um, if you come down to, if you view this, so the blue button there, um, and then come down to subdivision, and we're going to click this purple icon here. So now you can see the text as well as the sphere. So now what you want to do is it's only got eight faces. We don't want eight faces, we want a lot more. So we're gonna come up to here and we're gonna come all the way down to polygon mesh. 
but you can see it adds a few more. It also gives you two more options, rows and columns. So at the moment it's on 13 rows and 24 columns. If we bump them both up to 100, you'll see there is a lot more detail into this, which is what we need for the next node. So if you come back down and press tab, and we're gonna add in a mountain node. This, as you can see, before I've even viewed it, it kind of like distorts it. Um, adds a bit of a, a noise to the actual model itself. So we've got that. I'm thinking about leaving it just as it is now. You can also go back up to the sphere and you can add in more detail. So it adds it, it makes it a little bit better. Um, you don't have to do that. Depending on how good your computer is, you can go up even more. But um, for now, we're just going to leave it at that. I'm happy with the angle on that as well. You can go in here and you can change the height. Uh, you can change the amount. Uh, you can change the time. There's a bunch of different things you can do, but I'm just going to leave it on the default height one and element size one. So first, we need to go back down, press tab, or you can press backspace as well. And we're going to put in a transform. So we want the transform node. What the transform node does is you can move it from A to B. And you can keyframe it. You can change the size and the rotation of the um, objects. So firstly, we're going to go all the way back to frame 1. As this is where we're going to keyframe it at. I'm going to move this up to just so it's touching Ooh. just so it's not touching it but it's not far away yeah that's perfect okay so we've got that there and now we want to go up make sure you've got transform selected and you want to come up to the top here uh, and on the translate you want to alt and left mouse click and that will then create a keyframe now what we want to do is we want to go to, you can go as many frames in as you want, depending on how quickly you want it to get disintegrated or deleted. Um, if you have it around about 72 frames in, it's going to get deleted uh, very, very quickly. So I'm going to say roughly around about 120, which is around five seconds, five, six seconds. So now we're going to then also go to Alt and click on the translate um, we can then also move this over to the center of where the text is you can move it over to roughly whereabouts it is but if you come over here and you actually type in zero it will put it dead bang in the middle which is what we want um, just gonna keep that selected so now we've got that and you're wondering why I've only gone halfway well now we're going to go back to frame one. We're going to keyframe the size, go over to 120 frames in. And now we're actually going to come to the X axis, which is this first one here. So you've got X, Y, and Z. So we're going to bump this up to probably around about three, maybe 2.5. 2.5 would be fine. As you can see, it goes through just like that. And it's covering the whole text. If I show the text and then come to the purple icon here, you'll see that the text is all inside, which is what we want, as this will delete the whole thing instead of keeping a little bit at the ends, a little bit here, and so on and so forth. So we've got that. We've now done the text. We've got text sorted, and we've also got the transform of the sphere destroying the text. So now, to actually destroy the text, you're going to have to import this boiling node. And the first one, the first dot here, which is geometry A, goes into the text. And then geometry B, import 2, will go into the sphere. And set that loader quickly. If I come back down here. Okay. So as you can see, quickly it's actually doing the opposite it's creating it which is quite a cool effect but not the effect that we want 
So yeah, you can see it's creating it. We want it the other way around. So we're going to change this operation to subtract. And as you can see now, it's subtracting it. It's actually deleting it, which is what we want. So that's perfect. We're now finished with that. So we're going to add a null out for that. So we're just going to type in out text. And you can add in a cache node, um, a file cache node to cache that out. Uh, makes your computer go a little bit quicker. Nothing crazy with this at the moment though. So you don't need to. But now what we want to do is we want to press tab color. Okay, and I'm just going to duplicate that by holding down alt and dragging it across. For color one, we are going to change this to black. So it's zero, 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 zero. And for the next color, we want it as red. Okay. So the red one is going to attach to the sphere down here. And the black one is going to connect to the text just under the subdivision. So the text now is black and the sphere is red. Um, now, what we want to do is we want to add in a attribute transfer okay so you click that in again with the first one it's going to be on the text so the black and the second one is going to be on the red which is the sphere so if we click here now highlight that as you can see everything is red we don't want everything red we only want parts of where it gets destroyed red so if I show you this, we get off the primitives and we have the points. What we want to put in is capital C and lowercase d for color. So this is the color attribute. Now what you want to come over to is the conditions. This is where we're able to actually get rid of this red, bring it all the way down to where it's meant to be. So I would say bring this distance threshold down to maybe 0.02 and then the blend width I bring up to 0.03 yeah so as you can see now as it goes through it's actually copying where the sphere is coming through here which is what we want which is perfect okay so going back over to here I'm just going to disable that. Okay, so next up, what you want to do is you want to add in a scatter. So if you press tab and type in scatter, this will add a load of points onto the geometry of the text, as you can see here. But as you can see, if we go through it slowly, you can kind of see where the color comes in, which is what we want to add in over here. So if you come down to density attribute, we're going to change it from density to the color attribute. So CD, as you can see, we've now got points appearing where the color is, which is cool, which is exactly what we need. We can also up this to 10,000. You can have as many as you want. Um, just be careful not to go OTT on that because it will crash your computer. And talking about crashes, make sure you are constantly saving your file. So I've, if you want to, instead of going to File Save, you can just press Control S, and that'll save it to where you last saved it to. Um, now, what we want to do is we actually want to go in and create a pop network, which is where we're going to create all this particles so pop network we're going to add that in here the first one here goes up to the scatter um, i'm just going to add a merge down here as well for later on which i will discuss why okay so here we go if we come off this now we've now got Oop. if we go into it sorry so these are the, all the particles. This is the particle effect, um, the dot network, and we can go in and we can actually change how many 
particles are put in and so on and so forth so I'm going to click on points I'm going to go back to the start this is where it will slow your computer down but as you can see once it's gone over and created it they stay there which is what we want um, to move them we're going to add in a wind so if we type in pop a wind and put that just below the pop source um, make sure the emission is on points um, also the birth you can change the amount um, of particles that um, happen I think it's in a second or something like that um, but you can bump that up to maybe 10,000 just for the moment nothing too crazy and you'll see that the particles are even greater there's even more there so I recommend maybe staying on a low number getting the kind of like structure of how you want it to destroy and where the particles to go then bump that up and then render it out so we've got that now uh, we're going to mix it up a bit we're going to put we're going to put 0.1 and 0.1 in the y and the z axis um, this will mean that the particles will go up and towards the camera at the moment so it go up and it will go that way it'll go right so that's okay if you want that but if you come over to the amplitude and boost this up a little bit nothing too crazy you can also go over to the swirl you can change that change the roughness offset all these cause little um, sections you can change which will impact where the particles go and so on so if you go back to frame one and if we just play this really quickly now you see that the noise has proper taken effect of this which adds a quite a cool effect I think you can also have it so you have these particles disappearing if you want that will be up in the pop source come over to birth and then the life expectancy if you type it down to one uh, put this to one as well uh, as you'll see the first couple of frames will get deleted after a second as you can see they're deleting themselves and yeah so it'll keep gradually deleting and deleting and so on and so forth so we we don't want that so I'm going to put that back to 100 and 0 uh, there's loads of different other stuff in this but you don't need to go ahead with it I'm just doing the simplest way of creating this destruction disintegration effect so you get it onto your showreels and send it off to all the bigger companies and they'll be wowed by it just after this tutorial go back and change it from a text to geometry or anything really just change it to anything and you can go in add more particles and so on and so forth you want to be original in this to get noticed by all the biggest studios so now we've done that uh, we are going to actually come out of this so now we're in this I've added the merge here so I've merged them both together so I've still got the scatter as well which is around the edges which is what we want um, otherwise it would have just been like that you can see on the edges here that when I pair that it adds them more back in which adds a little bit more of a cool effect um, we're then going to go oops, I'm just going to go back um, we're then going to go and add in an attribute delete because we want to get rid of the colors so we're going to click here and we come up to points and we type in the color attribute which is capital C D okay so now there is no color on it other than the default black so now guys we're going to add in the slightest bit of coding nothing too crazy I'm not the biggest fan of coding myself uh, but this one it's it's a very simple line of code so we're going to type in tab 
we're going to type in attribute wrangle. Okay, put it into the first one. We're going to select it. We're going to type in at p scale equals 0 0.005 and then press control and enter to escape from that. This basically makes it so each one of these points you can now um, render out and it'll be at that scale. You can make it bigger if you wanted to. I'm going to quickly show you what I mean by that when I come to the render. So let's let this quickly load up. So as you can see, they're that size at the moment. I'm just going to do that section there. Yeah, do that bit there. So if I change this and I'm putting this onto one now, you see how the scale has gone up, which is it's a lot bigger and we don't want that size. We kind of want it small. Um, it adds a bit more detail when it goes into the um, motion blur as well, which is what we can add on later on. So, yeah, so we got this. Go back over to scene. And now we are pretty much done. I'm just going to add in a normal. Make sure the normals are all correct. Uh, and also add in a material. So now. You can basically go in, you can go into the material palette, you can add a material in there, you can apply it to this material. I always, at the end of the project um, and section of the project, so like this, we've completed the particles, on the last bit we completed the text. Always put a node down, put in out, and what the, if it's particles or if it's text basically, or fire, so on and so forth. So, um, particles. So we've got out particles and we've got out text. I can then show you now if I merge them both together. That we have the text. My computer is currently struggling a little bit. We have the text and we also have the particles destroying the text. And that is it for this tutorial guys. So um, if you want to now go back into the pop network, uh, come over to the pop source and if you want to up the amount that is emitted, you can do that when you go over to render. Um, it will make it a lot, lot better if you can emit even more particles than that. So at the moment that is 10,000 particles. Um, if you can bump it up to possibly uh, 50,000, might even be better. If you can go even more, then do it if you can. And then um, go onto the render and uh, render it out. Send me over what you guys have got so far. Um, I'd love to see some of the work that you guys have got. Uh, just go in, change the text, possibly change a couple of the settings, as well as maybe getting rid of the text and adding in your own geometry and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.